Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So somebody asked me earlier today, what would I say in the State of the Union? So my answer was very simple, very clear. I'd slash spending. I'd cut tax rates. I'd deregulate it. I'd have the Fed maintain honest money. That's right. That'd be my view. If we had those kinds of policies, we'd be growing the economy about 3.5% a year, like we did in the post-World War II period for 50 years, instead of 1.5% a year, which is the trend we've been on for three decades. Less spending, low taxes, limit regs, sound money equals prosperity. That's right. Nice and simple. Well, I guess getting there is politically a little harder. But that doesn't matter to me which political party offered to be stewards of a new economic prosperity. Doesn't matter. But I would say the chances are nowadays the Republicans have a higher probability than the Democrats. And unfortunately, President Biden, who will give the State of the Union speech tonight, not me, has virtually no probability. So Mr. Biden will defend his economic stewardship. And it's going to sound a lot different than the one I just outlined. He may tell us even a lot of untruths during the speech. I sincerely hope not, but that's my concern. But on the other hand, Americans are very smart. And polls across the board show they're not really buying Mr. Biden's economic prowess. Now, look, at, here's one key reason why. Just in the last four quarters alone, real wages for blue-collar working folks have fallen 1.4 percent. That's just in the past year. That's the worst since 2011. Now, since Joe Biden became president, the cost of living has gone up 14 percent. In terms of real dollars, working folks are losing about $15 a week, 60 bucks a month. The um, 14 percent hike in the cost of living is the worst since Jimmy Carter. And this decline, real wages, has been the soft underbelly of the Biden economy since day one. Because of overspending and the overregulating and the war on fossil fuels and the taxing and the inflation, Mr. Biden has never been able to escape the public's disapproval. We'll see tonight if he is willing to compromise with Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy on a debt ceiling increase that includes structural spending reduction. Now, the new speaker gave an excellent State of the Union pre-rebuttal which, among other things, emphasized the need for work requirements for social benefit programs. Over the last several years, as many as 7 million able-bodied people have left the workforce because government benefits pay more than the private sector. This is not just bad economics. It undermines the dignity of work. To some extent, it cuts into the very soul of America. Now, Mr. Biden's probably going to call for higher taxes on successful earners again, more redistribution policies, more disincentives to work, save, and invest, or start new businesses, or grow the economy. The tax hikes will be dead on arrival. It's all a pity. I don't actually think he's going to subscribe to my worldview of the optimal State of the Union message. I don't think so. Well, we'll wait till next year, maybe the year after that. I'm a very patient man. I know it works. Save America. Stop the spending. Go back to work. There we are. Got that all out today.